Okay, in this video, we'll continue looking at some applications of linear equations. And specifically in this video, we'll talk about another common word problem for algebra. And these word problems deal with the simple interest formula. So for those of you who have never seen the simple interest formula, it looks like this. We have this I equals P times R times T. So let's kind of break this down and think about what it means. I is the simple the simple interest earned. P, okay, P stands for the principal. That's the amount you invest in something. So this is the principal. Then R, okay, R is gonna be your rate, okay, your interest rate. And it's expressed as a decimal when we're working with this formula. A lot of times when you get your problem, it's given to you as a percentage. So you need to be able to convert back and forth to use this formula correctly. And then lastly, we have T, which stands for time. And time is going to be given to you in the problem. It'll tell you whether we're talking about weekly or monthly. In most cases, you're dealing with yearly, right? We invested this amount of money at this rate for this many years. That would be your most common scenario. So one thing you need to understand is that when we talk about simple interest, it means interest is earned on the original principal only. Okay, interest is earned on the original principal only. Now this isn't the norm for us. We're used to something called compound interest. Okay, this is different from compound interest where we can earn interest on interest. Okay, if you go to a bank, your money's gonna compound, right? If you put $1,000 in there and you earn, let's say, $100 in interest over the period of, let's say, one year, now your balance would be $1,100 and you can earn interest on that $1,100. With simple interest, even though your balance is $1,100, you still only get paid interest on that original $1,000. So that's the difference between the two. And we'll discuss compound interest in a future chapter. It has a slightly more difficult formula. So for right now, we're just gonna learn this simple interest formula. So let's suppose that $1,000 is invested at 5% annual simple interest for a period of one year. How much interest would we earn? in this scenario. Well again, I, which is the amount of simple interest earned, is gonna be equal to P, the principal, times R, the rate, times T, the time. Well, I know that $1,000, or we'll just put 1,000, is my principal, that's the amount invested. So I'm gonna plug in a 1,000 there. Then I have at 5%. I need to convert that into a decimal. So what I do is I move my decimal point two places to the left, I delete the percentage sign, so this will be what? 0 0.05 for the rate. And then it says for a period of one year. So time here is just one. So basically I have 1,000 times 0 0.05. Most of us at this point can just do that in our head. We would have I is equal to 50. So that's the amount of simple interest that would be earned after one year. So kind of going back to that point that I already talked about, the difference between simple interest and compound interest, if you think about after the one year, you've got a new account balance of $1,050. Now with simple interest, the next year, you're gonna get the exact same amount of interest. So you'll make another $50. Every year you have that, you're gonna get 50 bucks, no matter what your account balance goes to. If you have compound interest, you're now gonna receive 5% on this amount here. So that's really the difference between simple interest and compound interest. When you have simple interest, you only make interest on the original principal. When you have compound interest, you're able to earn interest on the interest that you've already made. Okay, and that's the beautiful thing about compound interest. Okay, so with this type of word problem, we may have to manipulate our formula and solve for P, R, or T. It usually comes like this, solve for I. I equals P times R times T. But again, we can manipulate this in any way that we want. If I wanna solve, if I have I equals P times R times T, and I want to solve for P, what I do is I treat R times T as the coefficient of P. I just divide both sides by this R times T. So this cancels with this, this cancels with this, and we get what? We get P equals I over R times T. If I want to solve for R, I use a similar process. All right, I would just divide both sides here by P times T, divide by P times T. I would get R equals I over P times T. Then finally, if I want to solve for T, 
I could just divide both sides by p times r, divide by p times r, I would get t equals i over p times r. Okay, so we've solved this formula for each different variable. We've solved it for i, p, r, and t. And it's important to be able to do this because based on what your word problem asks you for, you're going to have to solve for different variables. So let's take a look at this simple problem here. We have $10,500 is invested for nine years in an account paying annual simple interest. If the total amount of interest earned was $1,890, how much was the interest rate? So the first thing you would note here is that the question here asked, how much was the interest rate? So that means in this particular case, I know I want R, which is our interest rate expressed as a decimal, equal to something. Now up here we solved our simple interest formula for R. And we found that R was equal to I over P times T. So let's write that down. R is equal to I over P times T. So I am given I, right, that's the simple interest earned, that's $1,890. I am given P, the principal, that's $10,500, $10,500, and I'm given T, T is nine for nine years. So all I need to do is plug this stuff in and basically evaluate it, and I'll have my answer. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to get R, the interest rate expressed as a decimal, is equal to 1890 over 10,500 times nine. 10,500 times 9 is 94,500. So that's your denominator. And in the numerator, you have 1,890. And we perform this division and we get 0 0.02. Now remember, that rate is as a decimal. And to convert it to a percentage, we just move this two places to the right and add a percentage sign so that it's familiar to us. So the rate, the rate, was 2%, okay, 2%. Come back up here, 10,500 is invested for nine years in an account paying annual simple interest. If the total amount of interest earned was $1,890, again, how much was the interest rate? The interest rate was 2%. If you think about the original simple interest formula, interest earned is equal to principal times rate times time. Well, if you plug in 10,500 here, if you plug in 0 0.02 there, and if you plug in 9 there, you should be able to evaluate this and get this number right here, because that's how much simple interest you should earn. 10,500 times 9 is 94,500, then times 0 0.02 is going to give us 1,890. So we know our answer here is correct. Let's take a look at something else. Okay, how much money was invested at 6% annual simple interest? for three years to earn $3,870. So what is it asking for? It's asking how much money was invested. Okay, I'll just stop there. That's asking me how much was the principal. I remember we have this interest equals P times R times T, principal times rate times time, and it's asking me for this right here. So I divide both sides of the equation by R times T, That cancels with that, that cancels with that. And I've isolated P, or basically solved the equation for P. So I have P equals I over R times T. And I can just plug in and get my answer, right? It's 6%, that's gonna go in for my rate, 0 0.06. Gotta convert that into a decimal. T is gonna be three, right, for three years. And then I, the amount of interest that was earned, is 3,000. 3,870. So P equals 3,870 over 0 0.06 times 3. I think we all know that is 0.18. And if we do this division here, we get 21,500. So how much money was invested at 6% annual simple interest for three years to earn $3,870? The answer is $21,500 was invested, and we can say at 6% for three years to earn $3,870.
and check it using the simple interest formula that we know, right? I equals P times R times T. So principal here is 21,500 times the rate, which we know is 6% or 0 0.06 times the time, which is three. That should equal this right here if we got the right answer. 21,500 times 0 0.06 is 1,290. Then times three would give me 3,870. So our answer here is correct. Okay, so now we want to know how long was $18,200 invested at 12% annual simple interest to yield $28,392 in interest. So what is this asking for? Now it's asking for how long. Okay, so it's asking for the time. So if we solve this for time, we have I equals P times R times T. To solve for time, I divide both sides by PR. That's gone. And I have T for time is equal to I over P times R. So I'm just going to plug in. It tells me everything I need to know. 18,200 is my principal. Okay, let me kind of move this up. So principal, 18,200. My rate is 12%, so 0.12. Got to put that as a decimal. And the interest is $28,392. $28,392. So let's crank this out. So we have 28,392 over 18,200 times 0.12 which is 2,184. And if I do this division right here, I'm gonna get 13. So that tells me that $18,200 was invested at 12% for what? 13 years to yield $28,392 in interest. It was invested for a period of, and we'll put 13, years. Okay. I equals P times R times T. We know the principal is 18,200. We know the rate is 12%, so times 0.12. And we know the time, according to this, should be 13. And if we have the right answer, this result should be equal to this right here, 28,392. Okay. It should be that amount of interest that's earned. So 18,200 times 0.12 is 2,184. Okay, so that's how much you're earning each year in simple interest, then times 13 for the number of years, and you do in fact get 28,392. Okay, so we have the correct answer here. Okay, so let's try a typical problem that you would see on an Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 test, and just know that we're gonna work some more examples after this video concludes, so I suggest you look at those as well. So James won $26,000 at the casino. He wants to put part in government bonds paying 3% annual simple interest and the remainder in real estate funds paying 8% annual simple interest. Now his CPA tells him he needs to have a total annual income of $1,680 from the two investments. How much should he invest in each? So a lot of people will read this problem and their brain will completely shut down. What I want you to do is when you get a simple interest problem, go ahead and write out the simple interest formula to start. You know that it's just I equals P times R times T. Now just think about what it said. Just think about what it said. Do we know the interest? Okay, remember this is the simple interest earned. Well, what the problem tells us is that his CPA tells him he needs to have a total annual, okay, so that's yearly, income of $1,680. That's a huge bit of information for us because for one, it tells us that the interest income for this problem is gonna be 1,680, okay? It also tells us that the time, since it's annual income, is gonna be a one. And we know anything times one is just itself, I'm just gonna put a line through it, okay? I'm just gonna put a line through and put a one up here. So what else do we have to figure out? Well, we have the principal, okay, the amount he invests times the rate, and that has to give us $1,680. So what's my principal? What's the amount that he's gonna invest? Well, we know he invests a total of $26,000, but he invested at different rates 
okay, of interest. Some of it he's going to put at 3%, some of it he's going to put at 8%. So because the main problem tells us how much should he invest in each, our unknowns would be how much does he invest at 3%, okay, and that's in the government bonds, and then how much does he invest at 8%? So what you need to think about here is let a variable, okay, like x be equal to one of these. Doesn't matter which one, okay? So you can say let x equal this amount. How much does he invest at 3%? Or we can say, just to make it grammatically correct, let x equal the amount invested at 3%. And then what will happen is since a total, okay, a total of $26,000 is invested, we know that 26,000, we can say that then 26,000 minus X, okay, X is the amount invested at 3%, 26,000 minus this amount is gonna be equal to the amount invested at 8%, okay? And you could have easily switched that up. You could have said, well, X is the amount invested at 8%, and 26,000 minus X is the amount invested at 3%. You will get exactly the same answer. It, it will not matter because the end result is the same. So let's think about how we're gonna set this part up because it's gonna be equal to this. If X is the amount invested at 3% and the interest rate is obviously 3%, I have my principal times my rate for that part. So I'll have 1680 or 1680 is equal to this 0.03 times x. So this is the interest earned from the government bonds, right, over the course of a year. Then we're going to add to this the interest earned from the real estate fund. So we'll have 0 0.08, that's 8%, times this amount here, 26,000 minus x. 26,000 minus x and this is the interest earned as well. Interest earned. You can basically say this is the interest earned again from the government bonds, and then this part right here is the interest earned from the real estate fund, and when you sum them together, okay, they have to be equal to this amount here, which is the total amount of simple interest he's gonna earn for the period of one year. So all we need to do is solve this equation now for x, and we'll have our solution. So let's bring this down here. I'll have 1,680 is equal to 0.03x plus 0.08 times this quantity 26,000 minus x. We'll just kind of rewrite this. 1680 here equals 0.03x plus, use your distributive property, 0.08 times 26,000 will give me 2,080. Then minus, you'll have 0.08 times x. Let's continue to simplify. I'm gonna have 1,680 over here. I can combine like terms here on the right. 0.03x minus 0.08x would be negative 0.05x, then plus 2,080. Now I'm gonna subtract 2,080 from both sides of the equation. And you can see that this part right here is gonna be what? Negative 400, and this will be equal to negative 0.05x, we'll isolate x now, just divide both sides by this coefficient, negative 0.05, negative 0.05, this cancels with this, and you're gonna get x is equal to 8,000. Okay, x equals 8,000. So one of the main things you need to understand is when you get a word problem and you solve for your variable, in this case it's x, don't stop. A lot of students will just stop and go, x equals 8,000, I'm done. Throw their hands in the air and say, good job. But that's not the case because we need to interpret what x is, right? What is x? Well, if we go back up here, x is the amount invested at 3%. So let's write that. How much should he invest in each? He should invest, he should invest 
at 3%. And how much is he going to invest at 8%? Well, if you remember, there's a total amount invested of 26,000. So 26,000 minus 8,000 would be 18,000. So and $18,000 at 8%. So there's your answer. He should invest $8,000 at 3% and $18,000 at 8%. Now, if you have time, you want to go through and check this. And how do you check it? Well, again, you just use your simple interest formula. So your interest or your simple interest earned, again, was supposed to be $1,680 for the year. And this should be equal to what? The amount of principal that you have multiplied by the rate of interest. So $8,000 is invested at 3%, so times 0 0.03. And this should be added to, let me just kind of note that this is the interest from government bonds. And then this amount over here would be 0 0.08. He gets 8% interest times 18,000. Okay, this is the interest from real estate, okay, or the real estate funds that he invests in. So check this up on your calculator. If you have 0 0.03 times 8,000, you'd get 240, then plus 18,000 times 0 0.08, which is 1,440. You sum these two amounts together, and you're going to get 1,680. Okay, so the left and the right side here would be equal. You'd end up with 1,680 equals 1,680, and that's completely consistent with your problem. Right, all your parameters are correct. 26,000 total was invested. 8,000 plus 18,000 gives you 26,000. You have part of that going in at 3%. You have the other part of the remainder going in at 8%. And then the annual interest from the two investments gives you exactly $1,680. So again, our answer is correct. He should invest $8,000 at 3% and $18,000 at 8%.